advantage too is that it might be a little bit quieter if it's wet. If you're somewhere where there's a lot of moisture, uh, brakes might be a little bit quieter as well. And one thing that I like to look for is I like to keep maybe a nice straight angle. Are you looking for that stopping power out on the trails? Are you gripping that lever and not getting the amount of play that you want? Well, stay tuned because we're going to jump into all things brakes with one of the best gear advisor pros we got here, Darren. All right, so in our first section here, we're gonna go over some of these commonly asked questions. One of them being, maybe you just bought your bike and you're out there on the trail, it's giving you that weird noise. It sounds like the, you know, the old Toyota out on the road and the brakes are squeaking so loud that everyone's turning their head wondering what's going around. Or maybe you're grabbing that lever, like I said earlier, and you're not getting that stopping power that you really want, but the brakes are brand new. Well, that's why we're gonna jump into all about bedding your brakes and how to get that adjusted perfectly for you. So I'm gonna let Darren here go into all that. Again, Gear Advisor Pro knows everything you need to know. So tell us a little bit about bedding brakes. Hello, uh, my name is, I'm a Gear Advisor here at Jensen USA. And uh, today we're talking about brakes. Uh, I think brakes are probably one of the uh, components that maybe get the least amount of attention on your bike, right? You pull the lever, they stop, the lever's firm. That's kind of the extent of it for a lot of people. But there's a lot of like fine tips you can really do to uh, get those brakes dialed in. We're gonna go over some of those today for you. So I'd say bedding brakes is probably one of the best things you can do for your bike, especially if it's a new bike. So a new bike out of the box, think new brake pads or new rotors, it's a step you wanna do. Um, it's pretty easy, it doesn't take a lot of work or it doesn't take that long, but I do recommend doing this, You know, taking time specifically to do this. There's kind of an old conventional wisdom that says like, hey, let's just, just go for a ride. And at the end of the ride, your brakes will be ready to go. Like, I mean, you can do that, but it's not optimal. You know, you just spent a lot of money on that new bike. You just got those new, really nice brakes, dropped a nice coin on those. So let's get them set up properly. So basically when you get a, uh, a new bike, you've got new pads, you've got new rotors. Uh, those rotors are very smooth. You know, there's no material on them. There's nothing to cause friction, which slows you down. So what you want to do with bedding in this process is you're transferring material from the pad to the rotor. So what this process looks like is you want to find yourself a nice parking lot, a nice flute, nice smooth spot that's controlled. And you want to start and pedal up to maybe say a jogging pace, right? And you want to gently apply those brakes and just, you know, you'll start to notice that you have no stopping power and you'll kind of do that once and you kind of slow down to a walking pace, let off the brakes, accelerate back to that jogging pace, hit them on one more time to go down to the walking pace, let off. And you wanna do this about 20 times. And as you go through the process, you'll notice that your brakes start to develop power. You start to get a bit more lever feel. And uh, what that's doing is transferring that pad material, like I said, and that'll ensure that you have uh, not only powerful brakes, but also nice and quiet brakes. So say you get your 20 reps in, mm -hmm. Am I noticing anything on my rotor or is it just a feel that I'm looking for? Like, am I able to look down on my rotor and see some of that materials transferred to there to kind of give me that signifying feature of, okay, I'm ready to get out there and shred on my bike? Or is it more just like after those, you know, get those reps and you really feel that difference and that's that signifying feature that you're getting from it? Sure. So for the first 20, you might see, you might notice that the brake pad or the brake track on your rotor is getting a little bit darker than the spokes of the rotor. So you'll see a little bit of color change there, but not really, it's mostly gonna be in the lever. And trust me, you're gonna feel it. Cause that first time you hit that lever, nothing. It's gonna be like ice. Yeah. And then by the 20th time, you're like, okay, these start to feel like properly, proper brakes. Awesome. So that's the first step you're saying here to really getting out there, making sure your brakes are ready to go. Mm -hmm whether you bought a whole new brake system or a brand new bike, like you said, with that great rotor, you know, that great brake stopping power, you wanna get that ready to go. Yeah, 100%. And so you wanna do a few more tips there. Uh, you wanna do one brake at a time. You wanna stay nice and seated on the bike. And um, yeah, so like I said, it's it's kind of a lot of work. Take, it usually takes me about half an hour to do this process, um, but it's worth it. Like my brakes last a long time. They've got great power. Uh, they're nice and quiet. And so definitely a process, take the time to do this. Awesome. All right, well, let's get into the next segment. All right, so in the last segment, we went all over bedding brakes. You talked about how to go out there, get the reps in, take your time, each brake at a time. And you primarily talked about the lever being that signifying factor to tell you when those brakes are really dialing. You're gonna feel that on that lever. 
But what about just adjusting that lever in general? I know that that's a really important factor. Everyone almost kind of has a personal approach to where they want that lever, mm -hmm. but I know with the amount of information that you know, maybe you can help our viewers and stuff understand how to properly adjust that lever for the best feel they're gonna get out there when they're riding their bike. Yeah, definitely. So there's a lot of adjustments on the levers. And even if you know we have some very entry-level brakes all the way up to some top-of-the-line brakes, uh, there's still some adjustments you can make that are really gonna make the ride a lot better for you. So the first thing we'll talk about is uh, rotation. So where those levers sit uh, on the handlebar in relation to your hand, right? So the bike will come, levers are installed. You know, we just kind of, you, they probably just set them up, they put them on, maybe touching the grips, maybe too far out. So uh, for the most new hydraulic brakes, you can really brake with one finger. And they're kind of designed that way. And so how I like to run mine personally is I like to run those levers inboard. So I'm just grabbing the hook of that lever with my index finger. It just kind of sits right there in that nice little cranny and then just really locks in and it feels great. So you can definitely experiment with moving your levers in towards the stem or maybe out if you have smaller hands. Um, I have gargantuan hands, so mine tend to sit really far in towards the stem. Um, and so yeah, I'd experiment with that one first. Like that's kind of like a really basic setup that'll make a huge difference in how comfortable the bike is to ride and how the, the levers perform. Uh, the next thing I'd also recommend checking out is the rotation. So basically the angle that the lever sits, right? Um, if you've seen like some like pro downhillers or pro enduro racers, they run their levers like almost flat. It's like sticking straight out from the bar. It almost looks like the angle of like those old moto guards on like yeah, motorcycles, yeah, like yeah. it's directly in front of their hands. Um, you know, if that works for you, I say go for it. But you know, that's kind of an extreme example. But just play with that angle. And one thing that I like to look for is I like to keep maybe a nice straight angle on my wrist and my arm going down towards the lever and it just kind of feels comfortable ergonomically when I'm hitting those bumps and the arms are moving and I got a finger on the lever. It just feels very natural and unstrained. So I definitely recommend playing with that lever rotation as well. Um, there is a conventional wisdom that says if, you, you know, if you're riding a lot of steep terrain, having them more horizontal is better. Um, I'd say play with and see what works for you. That's definitely not a hard and fast rule, just kind of a, uh, a recommendation to try. What I like is that you're talking about like wrist angle and we know that out there on a long trail or maybe you're hitting the bike park where you're doing long consecutive, you know, rides and features, having that wrist, you know, angle and keeping that natural feeling on there, I think is super important, especially if you're someone like me where I feel like I'm always riding my brakes, trying to keep up with most of the people around here. <laughs> um, so what you're saying is, is, you know, based on hand size, find that adjustment on where you want that lever as far as on the position of the handlebars mm -hmm. as well as kind of find that angle in which where you don't really want to have your wrists kind of crooked where you're finding more fatigue in your arms or your wrists or your hands but find something that feels natural um, and lastly trust that with hydraulic brakes like one finger is really all you need. You don't need to be gripping with your whole hand. You wanna have right. as much control on those grips still with what you're steering, what you're you know facing on your bike, mm -hmm. but just trust that you can keep that one finger to get all that control. Yeah. Um, exactly. Is there anything else you wanna to add to adjusting that lever that you know maybe someone's never really adjusted a lever before? Is there a tip or a trick that they know or is it more so just getting like an adjustment, get out on the trail, see kind of where you're feeling and then make adjustments kind of as you're going along. Sure. Yeah, so a lot of it's personal preference and feel, you know. It's kind of like shoes. Like some people like their shoes really, really tight. Some people like them a bit looser. There's not really a right or wrong way to do it. Um, I'd say just kind of experiment and see what feels natural. Um, another adjustment you can play with is reach. A lot of uh, brake levers come with reach these days. So you can adjust how far that lever is away from your handlebar. So I'd say that's a good one to play with too. Um, you know, if you have large hands, you're probably running that lever pretty far out. Uh, if you have shorter hands, you're probably running it a little bit closer. Um, a lot of brakes have what's called tool-free adjustment. So it's a little dial you just turn and it moves it in, moves it out. Uh, some brakes will require like an Allen key to uh, get that in and out, but pretty much all brakes have that adjustment these days. So you can really get these things fine-tuned. And um, like I said, it's the thing most people don't think about, doesn't cost you anything, just kind of your time, but you yeah. can really kind of improve the way your bike feels and comfort too, which is really nice. Yeah, I think it's a, uh, it really is huge when you, you know, say you sit on a friend's bike or something, and I know like I'll jump on Preston's bike, our videographer here sometimes, and he runs his levers so far in where like I cannot almost reach those things. And I have smaller hands, so when I'm like, mine run pretty, close to grips, just enough where it's not rubbing on that inner thing. But you're saying too, like, 
gargantuan hands. Like <laughs> my hands are small, but it's crazy how personal even lever adjustment comes mm -hmm. into you know fine tuning your bike and everything. Yeah. So I hope that this helps with lever adjustments. Let's get into the next step and just keep getting into all things brakes. <laughs> All right, so we went over levers, we got that adjusted, we realized all these different ergonomics and comfortable feelings and things like that. What about at the other end and say brake pads? Mm -hmm. You know, these gotta be really important, right? These are what are gripping around that rotor. We have to basically bed those in from the beginning like we started with step one. Maybe tell us a little bit more about brake pads and you know, if there's different types of brake pads and all those kind of things. Yeah, so basically brake pads fall into two camps. Um, you have a metallic uh, compound, and then you have more of like a, uh, a resin or softer compound. Uh, different brands have different names for this, but they kind of accomplish the same idea, right? So there's different pros and cons to running the different compounds depending on your conditions and how you like your levers to feel, and that sort of thing. Uh, so we'll start with the metals. Um, I think those are probably maybe the more common that I see out here out west. Um, so advantages to the metallics is they tend to do better with long sustained descents like we have out here in California. So we've got a lot of steep stuff where you're on the brakes a lot, the brakes tend to get hot. Those metals tend to be happier with those like long sustained braking sessions. Okay. Uh, downside to the metal is when they get wet, they can be a little bit noisy, a little bit, uh, a little bit honky. I'd say if you're on like an e-bike, you're gonna want the metallics. Uh, if you've got the long descents, you're gonna want the metallics. Uh, the other one on the other side, we've got um, what's called an organic compound or a softer compound. Sometimes it's called a resin compound, depending on the brand. So some advantages there is you get a little bit better modulation. Uh, they tend to heat up a little bit faster. So if you're doing more of that trail riding where it's kind of short climb, short descents, mm -hmm. you're not on the brakes a lot, just kind of using them uh, intermittently, uh, you're going to want that resin compound. It might give you better results there. Uh, one advantage too is they might be a little bit quieter if it's wet or somewhere where there's a lot of moisture, uh, brakes might be a little bit quieter as well. Okay. So what you're saying is if you're someone that's really gripping on those brakes or you're riding a heavy bike or you're a heavier you know, set like myself, you know, being over 200 pounds, like that metallic's really gonna give me that stopping power I need, mm -hmm. but I may tell every animal in the forest that I'm coming down, mm -hmm. right? With those honking noises and things like that. Yeah, potentially if it's wet. Okay. If it's dry, you know, out here in California, it rarely rains, so you know, the brakes are always pretty quiet. But okay. Yeah, if it's a wet condition. Now, say if I have one of those organic matter style pads, what if I wanted to switch to a metallic? Is that something I can do is switch from one pad to the next or? Well, <laughs> uh, officially, uh, you know, you shouldn't mix and match compounds. Um, I'd say that's kind of the official stance. I think all the brake manufacturers probably tell you that. Yeah. Don't mix and match. Um, let's say you just bought some new rotors. They've got, you know, they're pretty new. You've only got a couple of rides on them and you want to switch them up. Uh, you know, you could probably take some sandpaper to them, you could probably sand them down a little bit and probably get away with it. Um, so, you know, I'll leave that up to you and your comfort. Personally, you know, I don't mix and match, but yeah. I pretty much sold on the metallics, so I just go metallics right away. Yeah. Um, the other thing I will say is uh, Shimano does make a resin-only rotor. Uh, I would not use metallic pads on that rotor, but everything else, you know, do what feels comfortable for you, but officially <laughs> would not do that. <laughs> So we'll just say it's probably best to stick with what you're running unless you want to do an entire swap. Probably not best to get down there. But if you're one of those people, obviously uh, it's possible, but probably not the most like likely thing you want to jump into is sanding and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would probably avoid it. Okay. Now we mentioned, you know, with metallic pads, if they get real wet and you're out there riding those type of conditions, they're going to start making noises. What if you're out there and you're riding in a lot of like mud and everything's getting really dirty? Is there a special way that you can keep those pads clean to ensure their longevity? You don't want stuff getting all gunked up in there. Maybe you could talk a little about making sure that they stay clean or how to clean your brakes and that kind of thing. Sure. Yeah, so the nice thing about kind of modern brake rotors is they're self-cleaning. And like actually self-cleaning, not like self-cleaning. <laughs> like, you know, that's what all these little vents are for in the rotors. Uh, they get in there and they just kind of chip stuff away, dirt, mud, debris, all that kind of stuff. So you don't really need to do any like cleaning or, or maintenance to like the pad or the rotor necessarily. That's they're, awesome. They're pretty happy as long as you keep them clean. Um, I mean, while we're on the topic, we can talk a little about contamination. Uh, we're talking about rotors and cleaning. Um, so the thing about brake uh, disc brakes, and this applies to all disc brakes, is they're really uh, vulnerable to oils. 
So whether that's oils on your fingers or chain lube or anything like that, you wanna keep that stuff away from your pads and your rotors, um, especially the brake fluid itself. So you just wanna be really careful um, when you're dealing with holding a rotor. It's like if you've got a new rotor, you definitely wanna hold it by the inside. You know, think like a, like a CD. You don't wanna to touch the face of the CD, you know, touch the outside, touch the inside, but uh, leave this braking traction, uh, this braking uh, tract. You wanna keep that uh, nice and clean there. Don't touch with your fingers or anything like that. Any tips for say you make a mistake and you spill some oil on there? Is there a cleaning solution or something <laughs> to kind of get that off, or it's kind of like ride through uh, it? Or I mean, there's some you know there's you can do like brake cleaner. There, I think there's some brands that sell it specifically for bikes. Obviously, they sell it for cars and that sort of thing. Rubbing alcohol, um, rotors can maybe be saved because they're metallic. So you can maybe get that stuff off. I've never had very good luck with it. Okay. If anything, uh, you know you're kind of looking at a new rotor at that point. But so you just know, don't do it. Yeah, so just be careful. Just, yeah. <laughs> and uh, same with the pads. When you pull those out, if you're checking your pads, you know you want to grab them uh, by the backing. You don't want to touch those pads. And if the pads get oil on them, those are like really hard to clean. Like it's pretty much impossible. Okay. And, I mean, you can put a lot of work into it. Yeah. But, I mean, you're like, man, you know, I might as well just buy some new pads yeah. and save myself an hour of yeah. work or more okay. scrubbing. So. So be gentle. Take your time yeah. if you're getting into that. Don't mess it up because it's a whole hassle to go from there. Yeah. So we've gone over brake pads. And we started talking about rotors, so why don't we dive full here into rotors here in just a minute and really go over all the points about rotors with them being so important. Sure. All right, so moving into rotors, we've gone through brake pads, we've gone over lever adjustments, and we've gone over bedding those brakes right after you get them. So. So why don't you tell us a little bit about rotors? Let's, let's go over the different sizing in rotors um, and just kind of give us, let's start with the overview of rotors and the importance sure. of them and all that. Sure, yeah, I'd say rotors are kind of having a moment right now. Yeah. Um, for a long time, it was just, you get a stamped steel rotor, that's what you put on your bike, you've got a couple sizes. But now we're seeing a lot of things like, we're seeing thickness, so mm -hmm. thicker rotors are coming out. We're seeing coatings and different materials and like, I don't know, Rotors are like the new space frontier for bikes. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so starting off, um, maybe you've got some standard rotors right now and you're looking like, you know, should I go to maybe a higher end rotor, like those new SRAM HS2s or like a Shimano Ice Tech rotor? Like, what am I getting for my money in these? Mm -hmm. And so I would say it comes down to, you know, a lot of cases, comes down to your conditions, your riding style. And so, one nice thing about the, uh, the I think those newer rotors is, uh, they tend to stay cooler a little bit better. Okay. And so heat management is like the name of the game for rotors, right? You want to maintain that heat. You don't always necessarily want them to be cool because they have a like an operating temperature where they're happiest. Mm -hmm. So you want it, your idea is to be able to get a rotor that's going to get to that operating temperature and stay there. Okay. You know, it's just like a just like smoking ribs or something. Yeah. You want to find that temperature and you want to stay there. It's all about consistency. Absolutely. So one thing those new rotors say something like a Shimano Ice Tech, these like SRAM HS2s. Uh, that coating on them helps them get to that operating temperature and stay there. So if you're doing a lot of long descending or you're really, you know, really grabbing on those brakes, think park days or shuttle days or just a lot of descending, you're going to want to spring for those, those nicer rotors. Uh, and I mean, if nothing else, I think they resist warping a lot better because yeah. they tend to keep the heat in check. So you don't finish a descent and suddenly your bike is like shing, 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 shing <laughs> as you're going down the road because yeah. your rotors are all hot and warped. And so that's a huge benefit. I think it's worth it. Um, the thicker rotors, um, they give you better lever feel now. Okay. Especially if maybe you've got a lot of, maybe some extra travel on your, your lever that you don't like. Mm -hmm. um, those thicker rotors are gonna take care of that, maybe give you sooner engagement okay. the, at the bar there. So, so a lot of this new technology, it does come with a little steeper price point, mm -hmm. but we're seeing a benefit from it. We're seeing 100%. immediate response and results from these things, from everything from you know, lever response to a thicker rotor, mm -hmm. to a lot of these new features for cooling and finding that sweet spot, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, to get through that break and everything, which I think kind of answers that question. If you really are looking for that immediate response and what you want mm -hmm. you know, in your brakes, it may be worth it to spend that little bit of extra money mm -hmm. and get that updated technology. Yeah, 100%. And, and rotors. Yeah, and the thing about brakes is you don't really notice how good they are until you ride like good brakes. Yeah. So you're like, oh man, this is a lot for these rotors. And then you get on there and you're like, oh yeah, like I feel so much more confident. Yeah. And you don't really realize how you're, maybe you're riding a bit on the conservative side because you don't trust your brakes maybe. And so it can really change the riding for sure. 
So you kind of mentioned this, like, you know, the different sizes and stuff. What if I have a smaller rotor and I'm looking to upgrade to a larger rotor? Yeah. How do I go about doing that? What's the process in which, you know, getting a larger rotor um, and maybe tell talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. So the nice thing about rotor size is, uh, you know, like so few things in the bike industry, there's actually standards around rotor sizes. So it's actually really easy to go to a larger rotor. So let's say your bike came with 180s, you want to stick a 200 or a 203 up front. All you need is an adapter. It's easy. It's uh, maybe like, an, you know, they're not very expensive. So, and they're easy to install. It's two bolts. <laughs> I mean, swapping rotors and adapters is, you know, that's maybe like a half hour job. So something you can definitely do at home. You don't necessarily have to take it to your shop to do. Um, so yeah, so basically it comes down to uh, minimum rotor size for your fork or your frame, mm -hmm. and then the size you want to go to. So okay. it's literally adapting from one size to the next. Um, it does get a little complicated depending on your frame and your fork, and there's been some changes there. Uh, you can always give us a call. Your advisor is happy to walk you through that. Um, but yeah, it is a very easy thing to do and very doable for, I'd say, most bikes. So I can't just go out, buy the biggest rotor I want, and slap it on. There's a little bit of logistics there that need to be done as far as, you know, what my fork can handle or what my frame can handle, and that's what you're saying, right? Right, so there's a little bit of that as well. You know, if you've got the cross-country race bike, you probably can't put 200s front and rear, um, but you know, outside of that, like, you can definitely have some good options, and it's an easy upgrade to make, and a really, uh, I think, a, a nice way to improve your braking performance without buying new brakes. Awesome, that's great. Um, anything else you wanna add to rotors, or you wanna add to, you know, telling people understanding rotors and that kind of thing? Yeah, sure. So I'd say the last thing, uh, the question we get a lot is about, you know, how to mount a rotor. So there's two ways. There's six bolts and there's center lock. And um, yeah, they, there's not really one that's more popular than the other. It seems like center lock is making a bit of a comeback in the mountain bike world after kind of fading away. So uh, yeah, just make sure you order the right one. Uh, there are adapters. If you, you know, you've got some new wheels coming and you just bought some new rotors, say last month, and you want to hold on to those because they got plenty of life in them. You can get some adapters to uh, run the uh, the center lock rotors. So just there. making sure you understand like what you have ahead of time, yeah. or if you're buying something, finding that adapter that's going to allow you to adjust to that different. Whether it's you know the adapter to go to a bigger size rotor, mm -hmm. or adapter to go from you know one style of mounting to the other. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, we can always, we can usually diagnose that pretty quick. Okay. So people send us a photo and we, okay, this is what you have, this is what you need. So it's a really quick process, so it's easy. Awesome. Well, Darren, I, I'm so stoked to have you here on camera to go over breaks. Sure. I know, you know, you get a lot of calls, you're working with a lot of customers. And so you get to see kind of front lines about what we're dealing with and what kind of, you know, issues and, you know, tips and tricks that, you know, our riders and customers want to know. Sure. So thank you for being here. Um, if, hopefully we do some more videos together. I yeah, think this definitely. went really well. Uh, let us know if you want to see more, or maybe some other questions that you want to see down below. We're happy to film some videos around there. And like we always say, now to put a face to it, <laughs> make sure to reach out to our gear advisors with any questions you may have. They know this kind of information and they're happy to share that and make sure you're getting the best ride that you can. So stay tuned and as always, keep pedaling. Why don't you start telling us a little bit about rotors? Maybe let's start with the size of rotors and you know, does size matter, sure. for example, on <laughs> rotors? Uh, cut that one. I'm gonna get it.